This is Kristen McAuliffe, live from The Challenger. Teachers are excited about this. Alka-Seltzer in the container. Look at that bubble! Here's your reaction. The whole country was invested in that, in that mission. We're going to have the opportunity to kind of bring that, that mission full circle. Hi there. My name is Ricky Arnold and I'm living and working on the International Space Station as a part of Expeditions 55 and 56. As part of the year of education on station, we're going to look at the effect of microgravity on the behavior of liquids. Specifically, when we try to mix certain liquids with water, why do some of the liquids we add sink below the water while others float on top? The answer largely has to do with density. Density is how compact something is. Think of a golf ball and a ping pong ball. They're almost identical in size, but when dropped in water, a ping pong ball, as you know, will float and a golf ball will sink. That is because the ping pong ball is less dense than water and the golf ball is more dense. So what happens up here on the ISS and microgravity? Let's find out. So, just like the experiment you're gonna do uh, on Earth, uh, I took some water and I added a little bit of food coloring to it. And uh, here's our water, and here is our olive oil. And look at that, it's separated very nicely. And as we talked about, there's two things happening here. One of which is that the, the oil, which is just a fat, part of it likes to avoid water and part of it likes to, is attracted to water, so it forms this thin film. And actually, if this water was spread out, the oil would just spread out along the surface, just like it does in an oil spill. And down on the bottom, we have water, which is the more dense, uh, the more des dense substance here, just as we would expect. And this is probably what you saw happen on Earth. Now, I know the experiment has us want to shake with bubbles and without air bubbles. Well, air bubbles are a problem on the space station. Fluids just do not behave like they do on Earth. And it took me quite a while to set this up. But that's okay because the scientists who send experiments up here, we have trouble with the way water behaves and the way liquids behave here all the time. Even in our spacesuits, air bubbles are a problem. Because on the surface, air bubbles are really, on the Earth, air bubbles are really easy to get rid of. They float to the top. Up here, they're far less interested in floating and more interested in just kind of staying where they are. And again, this has to do with, in a microgravity environment, the density just doesn't matter as much. And you can see a lot of small bubbles trapped in this, trapped in this, uh, in the oil here. Not so much in the water, but a lot of them trapped in the oil. My guess is there might be a thin film of water near these air bubbles as well as this accidentally mixed while I was putting it together. Not to worry, uh, this happens, uh, this is something that scientists up here have to deal with all the time. So let's go ahead and shake this up and uh, see what happens with the bubbles and see what kind of mixing we get. And the air bubble actually helps to force, you can see the air bubbles became much smaller, but the, the movement of the air bubble within the liquid helped to disperse it. My guess is over time, this won't separate as well as it does on Earth because the air bubbles don't really want to float in a specific direction, so they tend to become stuck in solution. Well, something you can't get away with on Earth is I just mix these differently, and uh, this is the exact same thing, except we have on the top, we have the water with a little bit of food coloring, and on the bottom, we have the oil. I don't think you're gonna be able to make this happen on Earth, but I'll be interested to see if you can try. What is happening here, I think is that uh, density plays less of a role. Um, and then what is actually more important up here in microgravity is the chemical property of the fat and the water that's making this uh, behave in this way. And it's more interested in staying apart and forming a, forming a film and a protective uh, layer between the two substances than it is in mixing and worrying so much about density, even with just a little bit of force like this. Here's something else I noticed. And that was just as well, I was just trying to get ready today. Here we have a nice separation uh, of, the, of the fat and the water. But if I actually apply a force to it, um, in this case, a downward force, a centrifugal force, I think I can get these to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my arm and uh, I'm gonna have the force pushing down this way and let's see what happens. Okay, the more dense water stays. Now let's flip it around and see if we can get the oil to move. 
So the centrifugal, the, the centrifugal force should be pushing the water down toward the, the more dense water down in the direction of the force. Look at that. A, my hands are all covered with vegetable oil, but the oil has now moved down to the bottom and the water is floating on top. So density played a role when there was a force being applied. In this case, it was a force that I was generating like a miniature centrifuge. And, um, and that caused the more dense water to come up to in the direction of the force over the less dense, over the less dense fat. We can also move the fat back to where it began just by applying the force in the opposite direction. So we want the water to go this way, so we'll move it toward the, toward the uh, handle of the syringe, the plunger of the syringe. That's pretty cool, and there it is. So we've got the oil back where it belongs and where it would be on Earth floating on the surface of the water. Now it's your job to see what happens on Earth. Thanks for participating in our experiment today. Signing off for now, I'm Ricky Arnold. So long.